All right, this is for all of you folks that want to get into doing the hydroponics. Now in here, I have three different systems. Well, actually four different systems. I have the NFT rails. I have a DWC. The tub behind it is uh, cracky. And I also have the Dutch buckets. Now let's start off. I'm only going to do one system at a time and we're going to take and concentrate on this uh, NFT rail system. Now in here I have a 27 gallon tank. Now always look for these black tanks with the yellow waffle design for the lids. They have, you can see that they have the ribs in there that reinforce these to where they can take the the high volume of water in that. Now in here, this system, I have actually an extra, this is a an auxiliary reserve water system that uh, fills up and I have a float valve in there that keeps it full and then a valve here where I can turn it off and that keeps my reservoir full using that float valve. Those are all sort of optional. The main thing you need is your reservoir. You're going to need a pump. Now, I use these uh, 300 gallon pumps. They're 25 bucks. And I have a T that just screws into it. And then I use this uh, half inch flex riser. That way, it, it lays in there. It keeps the thing on the bottom. And... Uh, solid. Now in here on the the return I have uh, just half inch uh, PVC with a couple fittings in that and I took and uh, drilled this with holes here and it acts as a muffler. If I didn't didn't have these holes in this piece in here you get a gurgling sound every time this thing does something. Now <coughs> This is my inlet side or my outlet that goes to my nutrient, which becomes the inlet on the rails themselves. Now this thing just runs up the length of that, and then I'll show you up that other end. Now here, I don't take and uh, glue any of these fittings except from here on. This, this can pull out, the press fitting on there is good enough to uh, get it to work. Now in here what I did is I took another piece of this rail and just slotted it so that each one of these rails just drops in there and there's nothing holding them except the weight of what's in here and that's the return. Now the things that I would have changed on this you can see here that these three rails on the end, here, here, and here, most all of this stuff grows straight up, no problem. So eight inches center to center is fine. Over here, you can see that this lettuce, this stuff spreads out and wants plenty of room. So there, I'd recommend that you also double the amount of uh, space in between those rails and cut down on the number of holes that you're going to have. And I'd put them like 12 inches center to center. Now, one thing that I'd done in here that I didn't like is I use these downspouts that are 4 by 3 or 3 by 4. They're three inches deep and four inches wide. Now, the problem I'm running into is your plants have to have quite a bit of length on them in order to get them out of the holes. So if I'd have gone and used the two by three downspouts, I could have cut that that distance that that plant has to grow before it clears the top of these by an inch. So I'd recommend you use the two by threes 
they're going to be cheaper and more cost effective. Okay, uh, right here I'm using a 1x4 that's separating these two rails. So that's actually, what, three and a half inches. So I'd, I'd take and uh, make them wider in between each one of them rails that you have your, your lettuces going. As far as your Swiss chard here and your beet tops and your cilantro and uh, basil and pak choy, you can get by with them being that three and a half inches apart. Okay, let me get up to the other end here and show you the plumbing part of this. On the plumbing, now here all of this is glued except for the risers. These risers are just threaded in. I use uh, Teflon on them and I've got, uh, these are all slip. This is a half inch slip on each side with a half inch female pipe thread in the centers. These risers have a half inch uh, pipe thread on them. Just screw them in. They're 12 inches long, so I just cut them off where I wanted them and put in this little valve, which is a 1032 screw on one side and a barb on the other, and just hook your vinyl tubing to it. You want to get the flexible vinyl tubing. The white stuff that I got was rigid and made it difficult to bend and, and get in there. So I got the flexible stuff. It's $6.73 from Jip Depot for a hundred foot of it. So uh, you're using it everywhere, so you might as well just get it. Now you can see here on this plumbing, each one of these, I can turn these off individually and remove that whole rail without the liquid, without your nutrients running in there. So it makes it handy when it does come time to harvest. I can just lift that whole rail up, take it out, harvest it, and slip it back in. But again, it gets awful tricky slipping that in. If you take one of these out in the middle, and you've got that lettuce going on both sides of it, coming in and going out. So if you added to the space, you'd be a lot better off making them, uh, I'd say twice as wide as what these are and cut down the holes to where they're 12 inches center to center. These are eight inches center to center. Now the one on the end here, this is a nursery rail that uh, they are, I think, uh, four inches center to center. That's just for starting stuff. And uh, now the base of all this is going to cost you about $75 for that uh, initial reservoir, the pump, the plumbing that's going to come up and around, and uh, that also includes here on the end, I have a half inch slip ball valve, it's half on both sides slip, with a half inch slip to three quarter inch hose fitting for doing the reservoir change outs. Okay, now that's $75 worth there. Now, each one of these T's the riser, the valve, the tubing, the downspout itself, you're looking at about $25 per rail. So if you're going to have a four rail system, well you can actually have a five rail system for about $200. And believe me, five rails will feed a family of uh, four and keep everything going. Now everything we've got here, we harvest off of all of this stuff. And right now I'm trying to thin it out so I can uh, take and streamline it and get everything down. Now my rails, I've cut 30 inches off of each one of these. Now <clears throat> when you take and if you're making that uh, 
that system of a five rail one, that 30 inches you're going to cut off of each one of these. You can bend the ends up using a heat gun or a hair dryer and fold them up and uh, actually make window boxes that'll have six holes in them for doing herbs in that in your kitchen window if you want. Just like Mike Van Dusey uses on all of his stuff. So if you haven't checked out Mike Van Dusey, be sure and do that. Now, if you're growing with Dutch buckets in that, be sure and check out CB's Greenhouse and Garden. He is the guru on this stuff. You got to check both of them out. And there's actually a third. If you want to know the experimental ins and outs of stuff, check out Hucho. Uh, he's there in Australia. And that guy is uh, the original crash dummy when it comes to this stuff. He shows you what works and what doesn't work, problems he's had. Uh, he sort of drives me crazy because he talks so slow. And at my age, I don't have that much time left. <laughs> so give him a shot too. And uh, in the description down below, I'll have this printout that shows you all of the costs, the sizes, and everything else that I'm using to make this system up. So I hope that helps you. If it does, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell so you be notified of any future videos. If you have any questions, go ahead and email me, email me at heyoldman1947 at gmail.com. It's in the description. And I'll be happy to get back with you. I'm pretty new at this. This NFT rail, this is my first go on this. But the Cracky and the DWC and the Dutch Buckets... This is my second uh, season on that. And I'll be doing more videos on both the Cracky and the DWC and on the Dutch Buckets. So I hope this helps and I'll see you on that next one.